At this time, the two brothers were driving to Utah. The radio in the car broadcasted that there were still seven escapees out of eight prison breakers. John was shot and killed by the police last night outside a hotel. Michael and Lincoln were shocked when they heard the news on the radio. The report mentioned that there were still seven fugitives, indicating that Michael's plan had been discovered by the police. Michael was not surprised, as he had enough time. David was living a comfortable life even though he was on the run. He fell in love and experienced the sweetness of love. However, things did not last long. The police outside showed photos to the woman and asked if she had seen this person before. The woman stared at the photos carefully and shook her head, saying that she had not seen him before. After the police left, David quickly stepped forward to explain. The woman said she wanted to go for a walk and would leave the car keys inside. She was implying that David should leave. David was helpless and decided to drive to Utah to search for the treasure. As he approached Utah, he decided to walk instead. Before leaving, he wrote a sentence on the window of the car, expressing his sadness for his girlfriend. Michael and Lincoln had arrived in Utah and were looking through the phone area codes in the local directory when they did not find the town of Double K. Not even the locals had ever heard of it. At this moment, Teabag also arrived in Utah. He took advantage of the opportunity to steal a pack of instant noodles. His broken hand was obviously not working properly, and he struggled to open the bag and eat a few pieces. Teabag turned around and saw David pulling him into a corner. Both of them knew that they were both here for the treasure. Teabag wanted to cooperate with David. Teabag had only one arm and could not do any digging work. David did not want to have anything to do with him and angrily left. Michael and Lincoln went to the city hall and looked through the town's map records. To their surprise, they found that the address of Double K had been torn off the directory sheet. They had come too late, and both of them had to leave empty-handed. Just as they were about to leave, they saw Teabag's back figure. They were shocked by his appearance. Lincoln, being strong, caught Teabag and forced him to give them the map. At this time, Teabag denied it fiercely and pointed fingers at David. They did not believe what Teabag said. They decided to temporarily put Teabag in the trunk of their car and then go find David. David walked into a convenience store trying to pick up a shovel that he thought would be handy. When he got to the counter to pay, the store owner recognized him as a fugitive and offered a $100,000 reward for his capture. The store owner grabbed a baseball bat and started hitting David who was knocked unconscious and dragged into the storage room by the store owner. At this time, Michael also came to the convenience store and saw the baseball bat on the ground. He immediately became alert. The store owner had just caught David, but saw another fugitive coming in and thought he was going to make a fortune today. Michael was prepared and with one punch, he hit the store owner. The two of them began to fight, with Lincoln arriving at just in time to kick the store owner in the foot. Lincoln pulled out his gun and the store owner had no choice but to surrender. The two brothers rescued David and demanded that he give them the map. David expressed that he did not understand what they were saying and had no idea about the so-called map. Michael finally understood that Teabag was intentionally misleading them. At this moment, Teabag was looking at the map in the trunk of the car. After memorizing it, he ate the paper. Michael returned and opened the trunk of the car. He found out that the map had already been eaten by Teabag. Although Michael was angry, he couldn't do anything to Teabag because he was the only one who knew the location of the treasure. Without Teabag, they would not be able to find the buried place of the treasure, and they could only be forced to cooperate with Teabag. Lincoln put David into the trunk of the car, and then they drove away. On the other side, Benjamin was on a high-speed train heading towards Utah. He borrowed someone else's computer to find out the location of Double K Town and borrowed paper and a brush to draw the map. At this moment, a conductor appeared and had some doubts about his ticket and called the police. Benjamin had no money, so he had no choice but to jump off the train and plunge into the river. As Benjamin was walking helplessly on the road, there was a loud roar behind him. When he turned around, he saw that it was Sukri. Sucre was still hesitating whether to pick up Benjamin or not when Benjamin showed him the map. Sucre decided to cooperate with him. The escape route of the prison break team all converged on Mahoney's place. When Mahoney noticed that they were all heading in one direction, he suddenly realized something. 
He found out that the prison break team was heading towards Debbie Cooper's treasure, so he booked a flight and rushed to Utah. Michael arrived at the burial place of the treasure, led by Teabag. To their surprise, there was no farm or cellar recorded on the map. It had been demolished and rebuilt. Charles wanted to eat ice cream but could never get any. Frustrated, he took off his helmet and started eating ice cream frantically. He washed his hair with juice and then ate various sauces. In this way, he ate everything in the restaurant. Just at this time, the owner came back and they obviously did not notice Charles's presence. Charles was drinking juice while watching them hug and kiss from the sidelines. Suddenly, the hostess noticed him and screamed. Charles realized that something was wrong and decided to leave quickly. He was a mental patient imprisoned in jail who escaped with Michael after joining forces. At this time, Mahoney received a report from the store owner and felt that his top priority was to capture Michael. He handed over the task of capturing Charles to the local police. After escaping from the hamburger shop, Charles sneaked into a residential house. Inside the house was an old blind woman who mistook Charles for her grandson. Charles went to take a shower and changed into clean clothes. The blind woman prepared sandwiches for Charles. While eating, Charles looked up at the painting on the wall and was deeply attracted to it. As a mentally abnormal person, Charles seemed to have a special fondness for the place depicted in the painting. The old woman grabbed his hand and realized that he was not her grandson, as his hands did not have any birthmarks. She remained silent and listened to Charles leave before picking up the phone to call the police. Meanwhile, Charles approached the old woman with a knife. Shortly after, two police officers entered with guns and saw that the old woman was safe. They asked what had happened. The old woman explained that a stranger had entered her home and she had mistaken him for her grandson, but she had not been injured. The stranger had taken something unknown and left. The police were puzzled by Charles' strange behavior. There were Charles' fingerprints all over the house. He had not stolen money or jewelry, but had taken a $10 painting. In order to get the $5 million, Teabag recalled the details on the map and finally locked in on a specific area. Michael confirmed the location through observation, and the money was buried in a cellar near the intersection. Michael pointed to the garage below and confirmed that the money was there. Since this was not a big city, construction crews quickly renovated the area. Therefore, the cellar should not have been discovered and the money was likely still there. After analyzing the situation, they got out of the car and prepared to move forward. At that moment, a woman emerged from the house and Teabag seemed to have an idea. Michael released David and ordered him to purchase the items on the list and fill up the car's gas tank. One hour later, they would meet back. David returned to the grocery store, where the owner was still locked in the storage room. As he was rushing to get the tools, the owner's friend walked in. Seeing the baseball bat on the ground and hearing the friend's moans, he quickly called the police. David hid in a corner, but he couldn't stop the man from calling and took advantage of the opportunity to knock him out with a shovel when he wasn't looking. Although he returned with the tools, he left a huge risk behind. Lincoln sabotaged the electrical circuit of the villa, and Michael pretended to be a repairman knocking on the door. He told the blonde woman that there was an issue with the cable underneath and needed to dig it up for repairs, which could be done that day. The blonde woman saw that they were well prepared and agreed to let them work. Just then, David arrived with Benjamin and Sukri. In the garage, they started digging for Deb Cooper's $5 million. When the blonde woman entered, she noticed two additional men. Michael quickly explained that the task was urgent, so more colleagues had been sent from the company. To avoid suspicion from the woman, Teabag decided to keep her occupied. Unexpectedly, the woman was very friendly and even prepared a drink for Teabag. As they drank and talked, their atmosphere became extremely flirtatious. Teabag thought good things were coming, but the woman's next words made him want to kill her. She had fallen for Lincoln, who was tall and muscular, while she was not interested in Teabag. Feeling insulted, Teabag looked at the knife on the table and wanted to kill the woman in front of him. Meanwhile, inside the garage, several people were frantically digging for the treasure and had just reached the foundation of the cellar. Seeing that they were close to getting their hands on $5 million, 
David suddenly said that he had forgotten to fill up his car's gas tank and had to go back again. This time, he wasn't as lucky as before, as the alarm at the grocery store had already attracted the attention of the police. Mahoney arrived at the scene and discovered the bound shopkeeper. He confirmed that the prisoner was in town and received a report from Citizen about David's whereabouts at the gas station. He pointed his gun at David's head and forced him to reveal the whereabouts of the others. Although David had betrayed Michael before, this time he hesitated. While they were still digging for treasure in the garage, a female police officer walked into their room and opened the door. It turned out that she was the daughter of the woman, who had seen broken glass and realized that someone might have broken into her house. Slowly walking towards the second floor, the prisoners hid in corners without making any noise. The woman broke free and screamed loudly, prompting the policewoman to pull out her gun and enter the bedroom, pointing it at Teabag. Teabag held a knife to the woman's throat and demanded that the policewoman put down her gun. While Sucre tried to sneak up behind her, she was caught by the policewoman. At this moment, Lincoln stepped forward and quickly took control of the policewoman. Teabag suggested killing them to eliminate future problems. However, Michael opposed Teabag's actions and asked Sucre to watch over them and not hurt anyone else while they continued digging for treasure. On TV, they reported on recent developments regarding the escapees. Lincoln suddenly realized that David had been gone for a long time. By then, David had already been captured by Mahoney. Mahoney showed them a photo of a victim claiming that Teabag had committed murder less than 24 hours after escaping prison and would continue to kill more victims in the future. Mahoney hoped that David would reveal Michael's whereabouts through this photo. Without saying a word, David looked at the photo thoughtfully, and Mahoney believed that he would tell them where Michael was. At this time, everyone on Michael's team suspected that something was wrong with David because he had been gone for an hour and a half. Suddenly, there was another big news report on TV. Due to insufficient evidence against Lincoln's son, all charges against him were dropped, and he was immediately released from prison. Lincoln put down the shovel and prepared to find his son when he received the news. Michael tried hard to persuade him not to go, suggesting that it might be a trap set by the police to lure Lincoln out. Despite Michael's efforts, Lincoln was determined to go and Michael had no choice but to accept his decision. They agreed to meet at a designated location in three days' time. Mahoney offered Lincoln a deal. If he provided information about Michael's whereabouts, he would be sent to a lighter prison. Faced with such an attractive proposition, David finally spoke up. He told Mahoney that there was a woman in the room and that Teabag could potentially hold her hostage if the police forced their way in. David proposed that he go inside alone to rescue the hostess and then call the police. To ensure the operation went smoothly, Mahoney installed a listening device on David. As David approached the house, memories of betraying Michael flooded his mind and he slowly pressed the doorbell.